And oh wait, oops. Wow, wow. I'm get it together. To start. Get it together. <laughs> I can't. <clears throat> FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. I'm T. Sterling Watson. And I'm Courtney. This is the Indie Podcast. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. This is episode number 71, number a week sometime in April 1st, <laughs> April the 1st. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, it's not even a week actually i should because i found this really cool calendar where it gives you all these uh uh interesting dates like it'll tell you the number of the day so i meant to bring that back I'm like oh this is chapter um oh no page number 191 remember when people would when the new year was like mm-hmm. page 365 so hmm. yeah i meant to I send a don't tweet most out the calendars do that now or no some give of you them like the do. date, I... give you the Google day of might. the year. Maybe that's what I'm thinking because right. I, I have Google Calendar and it's awesome because sometimes I just want to know, you know, I want to know which day of the year we're at and it tells me and it's easy. And I think it's Google. I feel like I should know that though. Google does everything. Before it we does. continue on <laughs> that, we have a special guest with us today. We have um, Nisha. Hey. All right, and hey, much hey, Nisha. <laughs> you are the host of the podcast uh Speak on It, which just debuted like two months ago, I think. Two oh my god, it has been two months. It's been we I just put out the fourth episode and I'm lazy, so I only do bi bi weekly episodes. So it's not lazy. You you're busy, you're doing a whole lot of things. <laughs> well, I say anyway. So um mm-hmm. Because yeah, it, it, I mean it, it can be uh, uh, tedious. But hey, um, tell us a little bit about your your show and um, what made you start it. And okay, um, so I got into podcasting a few years back when I was finishing up college because I found it was a good way to help me concentrate. Like I liked just sitting in on a conversation and hearing people talk about things I was interested in. And when I first started getting into podcasts, I listened mostly to things like Nerdist and Fat Man on Batman, like Kevin Smith's podcast. And I really liked those, but then after listening to, like, those are really my only two podcasts because I didn't know how many more there were out there. So that made me start wondering, like, I want to listen to podcasts that maybe feature people like me, like, you know, I'm Black, I'm nerdy, I'm into, like, a bunch of different topics. So that's when I started seeking out other things, and I found, like, Black Girl Nerds. And I found Nerds to Pray, and it just lets me finding other, like one podcast will lead me to another podcast. And I really just fell in love with them. And I love the idea of how accessible they were for everybody. Like basically anybody can have a podcast. And I think that's really awesome because people have things they want to say. And I that's what really got me into it. And that's when I eventually, after like three years of being anxious and always talking about how I want to do one to myself because I didn't tell anybody. Um, I finally pulled the trigger and I made my own podcast and it's called Speak On It. Hmm. And what is Speak On It about? So Speak On It is about, I have a guest on, that was not proper grammar, but anyways, I have a guest on. Um, I usually, it's someone I know in real life or mostly it's been people through Twitter because I've connected with a lot of great people like yourself here. And Oh. And they, you know, on Twitter, you have the ability to just like dive into discussions with people and like start your own little thread of conversations. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it'd be really great if I could talk to this person, like not face to face, because that's, you can't. They're like, maybe they're in Peru um, or in Canada. So mm-hmm. I was just like, I want a podcast where I can talk to someone that I know on Twitter or like, you know, about a subject that they're passionate about or like something, a hobby they're interested in. So Speak On It is a show where I have a guest on and they speak on it. And the it can be anything that's like they're a fan about, they're interested in, a current event, a social issue. I kind of 
I don't put restrictions on it because I kind of want to let people like if there's something they want to speak on it, I want to give them a safe space to do that. So I one of my mm -hmm. taglines, it's like from anime to activism, we'll cover it. So that's what it is. Hmm. Nice. And uh, again, I don't remember if I said this before um, we were cut off, but you've been doing this for like two months. Like you're still fairly new in the, mm -hmm. the cast uh, arena, which which is is huge, but welcomed. So we are we're glad to have this edition of uh, speak on it in the uh, I don't know. I, I feel like there still should be like a, a network name for all of us because um, mm. you did, did mention, um, like Nerds of Prey and Black Girl Nerds, mm -hmm. which are mine friends of the show mm -hmm. and um we'll support poc podcast that's that is a hashtag that we used last year mm -hmm. to you yeah. know so um but yeah you're in good company so with uh some other you know yeah, podcasters thanks. just out there and you know say stuff mm -hmm. so, um i do have an icebreaker question for you bring it <laughs> i'd warned you about and and um so Ben and Jerry calls you personally and they're mm -hmm. like, Show, we need help. We, we, we need a new flavor and um, we're, we're out of ideas. So what do you give them? And you have to name it too. Okay. I think I got this. I want it to be like chocolate, like really good chocolate ice cream. Um, mm -hmm. But kind of like fudge. But I want salted almonds inside of it so hmm. i'm just trying to, i'm like okay. trying to think of it because i like i really have been like on this like whole almonds kick i know they're not the best for the environment but they're delicious so kind of just stuff them in there they can also be covered in chocolate so but a name for that i work in marketing this should be easy um, should be but it is not <laughs> but i got you on the spot so that's why you don't have like time nothing to, is appropriate you know, the about. names i'm thinking of are not appropriate <laughs> <laughs> and i don't uh, huh yes but i feel like i can already guess yep. but this is a family show yeah no i'm gonna keep it, it like clean i'm gonna keep it clean <laughs> um <laughs> choco nutty ice cream that's like the vg version i wish <laughs> i wish i could come up with something better it's like oh now i'm gonna keep the dirty stuff to myself please <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll eventually have to do um like in Dube after dark or something. Mm -hmm. So um we'll put that on Patreon. So uh all all restrictions and bets are off. Just like food fight mm -hmm. after dark. Oh yeah. I like that one. That's a good I like that show. Yes, yes. Which again, for those people that don't know, if you I think even uh, episodes are a dollar, even on Patreon, you can uh get those episodes for a dollar or go on my Patreon. Be a dollar subscriber and you get a whole bunch of stuff, including movie reviews, um, which we will touch on briefly because I, I want to know what, what has everybody been up to the last um, I was going to say last time we recorded. But Nisha, you're you're new. So uh, what, what have you been mm -hmm. Nisha, lately? Ooh, let's see. I'm getting ready for Universal Fan Con. That is less than three weeks. Ooh. And I'm doing a cosplay. So exciting. Yeah. Can you tell us you what you're gonna going? cosplay? Oh yeah. Oh, so oh excited. nice. Um, I am planning on cosplaying as Svani from Steven Universe. Nice. Um, yeah. I'm just like I just I mean it's kind of simple, but I really like the character a lot. Now that is my first choice, but backup, I will be bringing a leather jacket and some ripped jeans and saying I'm Jessica Jones. If <laughs> can't go wrong just, with that. Just in case. Mm -hmm. just in case because i've kind of like worn out my wonder woman costume and it's not up to par with cosplaying but i do enjoy the fact that like cosplaying is very freeing and you get to just like and you don't have to look exactly like the character so mm -hmm. that's something sure. i should be finishing that cosplay but i have not even started mm. <laughs> yeah yeah i i yeah i said a long time ago when Universal Fan Con was just being born and I was like mm -hmm. I'm so gonna cosplay something and so now that we're about three weeks away I'm just like hmm I never did anything with that did I and so <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> probably not going to because it's kind of late but you know we'll see I may can throw yeah. something together pretty quick I've done I've done worse yeah because Cordy and I we discussed it 
too. Like we were going to, I think we we're going to be the reverse, uh, or, or gender swap. Um, mm -hmm. the ten um, Oh yeah, we did talk about that. This is the first time we're re-talking about it. You realize that, right? Yeah. Yes, I know. It's been months since we've talked about uh -huh. it. But I can't remember her name. Um, Martha Jones? Yes, Martha Jones. Mm-hmm. Told you memory issues. Yeah, it's okay. It comes with age. It's all good. What's that? For? I guess I would be... Oh, sorry. Martin Jones. Oh, Doctor who? who? Oh, you have to forgive me. I'm so behind on Doctor Who. <laughs> it's okay. There's but always time to catch up. Yeah, I'm like on the tenth Doctor, right? Is that right? That sounds right. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, that, there, there is a tenth Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's weird. There's now I, like fourteen though, but it's okay. <laughs> yep, yep. There's just like so many, and I think it's it, they started showing it on like Disney XD one day, and I was like babysitting, and I'm like, what is this? What? Yeah, and then like I don't think and you loved it, and you fell in love with it. I I was intrigued, and I want to dive in deeper. I just don't <laughs> want to go back all those other seasons. So I'm like, from tenth Doctor on, I'm just gonna start. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. um, I didn't really have to go to the older ones. I just started with nine, and then worked my way mm -hmm. to. So okay, good. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yeah, so uh, you know you don't have to go all the way back because I don't even know if those are really available. I'm sure they're available somewhere, but. I don't really want to, and I hear they're boring. Like, I'm just compounding. I imagine. Yeah, so. they're yeah, they're different. They're not. I mean, they're they're older, so you know the show, especially back in the '60s, the whole pacing of a show is just so different. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. To, mm -hmm. to quote, I think I'm quoting Ellen DeGeneres here that you know back 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 then there was a lot of time. Like, if there's time for whistling on your show. There's a lot of time. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Andy Griffith show at the time. And it's just, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I remember watching that like on Nick at night. I'm like, why am I watching this? Uh, well, I'm trying to go to sleep. So that's probably why I'm watching it. But you know, there's, yep. there's a different time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but with that said, yeah. So you just start with nine, just, you know, go at your own pace or, you know, binge as much as you can in one sitting, which ha often happens with mm -hmm. me. Uh, as well i'm i can i know that she does this so oh, yeah, um totally. <laughs> it happens all the time oh my god before i forget um courtney can you give me the breaking news um thank you <laughs> so uh actually we've got two bits of breaking news uh spotify has gone public so if you are into the stock market game which i really want to be someday and maybe i should start uh i should buy some stock options in Spotify because I love them. Um, but the real breaking news here is I think it was just announced today that Black, Black Panther is now number four domestically of top grossing hey. films. Nice. Yes. What was it? What were the top? Right. Well, kind of forever. What were the top three? It was Jurassic World, what? Titanic, and uh, and Avatar else? and uh, Star Wars Force Awakens. Well, in the correct okay. order, number one is Star Wars Force Awakens. Number two is... That's not a movie. Um, number two, <laughs> there, um, two and three is Avatar or Titanic, both from James Cameron. And then mm -hmm. Black Panther, Jurassic World is now uh, number five. Oh, thank God. Mm -hmm. I know Jurassic World is Courtney's favorite movie. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> so uh, It's not. He's being very sarcastic. Ugh. <laughs> I could tell, but yeah, yeah, I was just like, "Good, they moved down." <laughs> he loves Thank that you. movie so much. Ugh. Like he just watches <laughs> that movie. Off, like, it's it's just I don't know. It's irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Her neck over it, and she's like, "Let's watch Jurassic World again." And then, mm. oh wait, no, mm -hmm. that was that was um, fantastic. And then the okay, and then the and then the <laughs> worst part about this whole Jurassic, you know, reboot or whatever is they're making another one. Yeah. Like, the first one was terrible. What are you thinking? People Before we started recording, <laughs> Jeff, we talked about Jeff Goldblum. He's going to be in this movie, so at least you have the sexy back. Oh, really? Oh, so I have to see this one now. God. But where's his oh. daughter? I need his daughter there, too. That's true. She is a thing. Because she was black, right? She had a black mm -hmm. daughter. Didn't he? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, you would. yeah I mean, they need to bring that back. They need to address that. I mean, my favorite thing is that they never, like, 
said she was never explained it (laughs) never explained it and i'm just like i kind of like that they don't don't explain it we don't know about the mom right and then like this little gymnastic girl kills a dinosaur i'm like she needs to come back Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. except that was a terrible that was a terrible movie that we generally don't talk about that's the only thing about that relationship that doesn't work is the movie (laughs) (laughs) which one is now is as I've, it was the I mean, it was the second one where mm-hmm. I th- it wasn't it the second one where they went to like the dinosaurs were in L.A. It was after Jurassic yep. Park the original and before Jurassic Park three like the Lost World or something or maybe Lost World was number two. It is yes, yeah. I because I saw okay. it on a bus on a field trip mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. the only time I saw it so I probably haven't really seen it properly. It was <laughs> it was terrible. You I mean that's all you need to know. But he did have a black daughter, so that was. Uh, interesting and then they did number three jurassic world ugh, i, I mean ugh, jurassic park number three and i loved it i like the I second love that movie. i like the second one but i hate the i hate the third what? one i know we're just at we what? are at ends we are at ends. oh my god <laughs> this is just 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 go i don't know just, i think i just, just like the car i think i just like <laughs> the carnage of the t-rex i'm like i was on this i was always rooting for the dinosaurs sure. in the movie so I think I like the carnage of the T Rex being in like downtown LA. Also, I like Godzilla because I just think that in my like ten year old brain all made sense. But if I watch it now, mm-hmm. I know it's bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is, and, and yeah, you no, I get it. Watch it. You should rewatch Godzilla now because it is hilariously mm-hmm. bad. Because uh, I, so I, t- bad. I too loved it when it first came out, and again, I'm we're all talking about the ninety nine or the nineteen ninety nine version correct yes yes um because i did revisit it and actually i think they live tweeted it for saturday night sci-fi recently so it was Mm -hmm. it was fun and i'm like wow this this is this is insane and going back again to uh nerds of prey i think there was a discussion that they had that somehow related to puff daddy's well he was puff daddy at the time um come with me his song that went along with that and um i think jamie page because they're doing, uh, I think it was a remix of Cashmere. And um, watching that video, that music video again, is kind of life-changing. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's <laughs> looking up. And like, mm-hmm. wow, what what is happening? <laughs> yeah, you really should. Um, I mean, it's actually a really fun song. Like, it'll get you kind of amped if you're trying to get ready to go to work. And then you're just going to go, you're just going to keep going, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, because he does it. <laughs> that's part of his lyrics so um mm. it's it's great it's i highly recommend it i i tweet it just for the fun of it and sometimes uh shannon will just notice and start laughing because of the hilarity that is mm-hmm. ah, such a happy memory <laughs> so that's that your homework assignment we give out homework assignments now by the way on the show uh i never do it it's okay though like you don't have to do it I'm out. Don't of tell her. <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, out of school. Why do I have to learn more? I'm Mind kidding. It. Learn more. <laughs> learning is always good, though. Yes, always. Everybody, yes. keep learning forever. Always, and don't please. stop after school, please. This world is. You don't just... stop. Get it. Get it. <laughs> Other <laughs> things I have seen recently. Um, <laughs> I keep forgetting that I saw Tomb Raider, uh, the oh. new Tomb Raider that came. Yeah, that's a movie. Um, I also saw- <laughs> Everybody was, keeps forgetting about it, apparently. How was that? Mm-hmm. What, Tomb Raider? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, um... I mean, okay, so let me be honest. It wasn't bad. And I did okay. record a review. I just haven't put it on Patreon yet. And, I mean, even the uh, how long that review is, and I think it's like three minutes compared to my other reviews, which are like ten minutes. Okay. Um, it's... It, and I, I'm I'm actually stealing from somebody else's review, but it's like watching somebody play a video game and it's not really that much fun mm. but uh, i see what they're trying to do it's it's uh her origin story basically and you know she she's she's okay it's it's an okay film it's fine like like a lot of my british um reviewers and podcasters whenever they're saying something is like you know it's fine it, i just i just, it's fine mm. <laughs> i mm. would wait just just fine huh yeah I would wait until it starts streaming. If you really want to see it, just wait until it streams mm. somewhere. 
Oh, wow. That's a long time, though. That could be, like, years. Well, Netflix is getting up there, but... They are. I mean, it's I been, mean, like... It could be a while, though. I mean, between Amazon Prime and them, yeah. And Hulu. Yeah. That's true. I mean... May not yeah, be that it, long. Yeah. Might not be that long, but it's not worth going to the theater. I mean, I, I feel bad saying that, because I, I wasn't bored. Mm-hmm. I'll put that... I'll, I wasn't bored. Mm-hmm. I was in a... But when the, when the movie first started, like, five minutes in, and... I don't, I don't really mind if people get offended by this, but it's just the truth. Um, it's just like they found uh, something that's going to kill you, and then the white people are like, okay, let's go get that thing that's going to kill us. and Let's go chase after it and get it before it kills us type of thing. Well, let's get it, and later on in the movie, they find out that they actually want to use it, I think, maybe to weaponize it. I'm not sure if that was every clear, time. but every time they, they just find this thing. Every single time. Didn't they want to do that to the dinosaurs in Jurassic yep. Park? Things gonna kill. No, they, they want to make hybrids. Well, they didn't want to weaponize them, but you, right? You can't do that with dinosaurs. Yeah, it oh. just sounds really dumb. Right. They should just right. made a. I would have yes. gotten to super soldier serum before. Let's make a human hybrid dinosaur because that will go well. <laughs> that that will work out right. fine. Mixing right. T Rex DNA with exactly. a man's DNA. Sure. Hmm. Oh Let's continue this down this path. Let's do it. <laughs> I just don't see how that conversation can actually happen and people not be like, really, bro? That's that's what you want to do, though? Okay. This won't end well. I just can't yeah. see it. Yeah. Doesn't seem like a disaster. What was a much better memorable film that I, I really would like to go see again is Ready Player One. I had really? a lot of fun with that one. Um, I don't know what other like reviews are saying. I do know that it's actually um, getting some you know good ratings. It made number one this last past weekend. It's worth seeing an IMAX because you just it's for me the definition of escapism because I actually forgot I was in a movie for a while because that's you know why. So it was it was just a lot of fun. I enjoyed it immensely. It's one of the few movies I've seen that I read the book before I saw the movie, mm-hmm. and um, I'm I'm okay with the liberties they they took. Because the movie, mm-hmm. I, I think, means like maybe, I don't know, ten years or something. I forget in a while, but everything is like within maybe a couple of days or a few months. I don't know, but it's good. I recommend it in the theater Wait. and IMAX 3D. I might squeeze it's, that in this weekend. I mean, that or see Wrinkle in Time again. But I do know I want to see um, Ready Player One. Hmm. It was it was fun and Steven Spielberg at his best. Okay, as we said, coming a full circle back to Jurassic Park because mm-hmm. some people even mentioned that wow this wasn't I haven't had as much fun since Jurassic Park and you know mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I mean you know some people <laughs> will say that I'm not naysaying Jurassic Park at all. Um, also recently Jesus Christ Superstar was on NBC which I did watch. Because I'm a big fan of John Legend and Sarah Barry Ellis. So that was that was well done. We will do at some point a musical special because we'll probably revisit Hamilton mm. and I'm sure we like to talk about um Lay Miserable. Mis- Lay Miserable, that's all you have to say. <laughs> There's you don't have up. to be you don't have to be like that about it though. Well, okay, I haven't seen it yet, but you know. Mm-hmm. So- it's amazing. It's great. Beautiful. I still haven't seen it's it. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so good. It looks so sad. It's long. It is long and it is kind of sad, but it's so good. Mm-hmm. Like, like, it just, uh, it's, it's amazing. I love mm-hmm. story. And like, the reason I love it is like, it's so beautiful. The muse, it's great. But like, I like the stories of someone who's like, danged if they do, danged if they don't. But they, it's still like a happy ending in it. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of like how I feel, yeah. like how the main character's life is. Like, I don't want to get spoiled. Yeah, I mean it's been out for yeah. years, literally years. <laughs> um, hundred, literally years. years. But yeah. spoiler, I'm, I haven't. Don't tell me. Does anybody die? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, lots of people die. There's a war. <laughs> Of course, it's a musical. It's a war. It's the like the French Revolution. It's oh, people yeah. die. But come on, it's it's a, also a musical. So you know, now stuff happens. It happens. Um, will you see it? Will you see the Hugh Jackman one, like the movie, the cinematic one, or like the original? I think they made two an older movie. That's probably 
I'll probably go for the Hugh Jackman one, which I hear Russell Crowe does oh, terrible it's funny. singing. But... <laughs> I didn't think he did that bad. I mean, it wasn't just amazing, he but he it wasn't super horrible. He didn't do I horrible. I just think like hmm. the third time through, I found myself laughing when he would sing. And I don't, I still don't know why. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, it it must have been like, it was just pure exhaustion on my part. But like, <laughs> even now, I think I just like laugh a little bit. But he's a good singer. It's not like, I, I can't think of a horrible singer at this moment. But it's not like he's screeching. He's just a very boisterous singer. But he did good. Yeah, it, it it's... It, it, <sighs> just see yeah. it for yourself and, and you be the judge if of it. If you want to see... And I mean, but you gotta mm -hmm. hand it to them. Like they did it basically yeah. live, basically. Like they didn't record in the studio, and then they, you know, sung along with the track while recording or mm -hmm. while filming the movie. So I feel like that adds a little, a little bit um, to his performance. It may not be much, but it it does add something to the performance. Yeah, I've heard that. I think that's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I've heard that as well, that they were singing live. Um, mm -hmm. I'm checking. Yeah. No, I that's kind of like my favorite thing about it is like the whole set, most of the sets are real. Like was the whole entire set's real and they're like singing like actually live. No one's dub voices is dubbed in. And right, right. So, I mean, like absolutely. I so mean, what I said that's before. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And like, so I'm not discrediting any of his work in the movie. I just still can't explain why I laughed the third time I saw him singing. I don't know. That has to be on, it has to be on me. Um, but yeah. Probably. Like, probably. It is. It's me. It's not him. But yeah, if you want to see Wolverine get like chased mm -hmm. by the gladiator. He's a good singer. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hugh Jackman's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He yeah. is. Which I still I'm, haven't I'm, seen that circus movie. Yes, that's I, I would oh, like to. Oh, Greatest Showman. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for him to see it so we can talk about it. Mm. And uh, because I mean, the soundtrack is amazing. I still listen to it. And I think that just recently got platinum. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's good. I really do enjoy it. That was fun. I don't in a know movie. much about that movie. I don't know much about that movie, but I will tell you, I saw um, like a, I think they were performing at the Grammys, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't love the performance itself because I was just like mm, kind of pitchy, but OK. But the song itself was amazing, and they were so impassioned. And Sterling, I think you told me that uh, all, if not, or most, if not all of the um, singers or performers on stage at the time were the same people that were in the movie. So that added a bit more to it. But, like, the song brought me to tears. I'm like, how does this terribly performed song mm -hmm. How is this doing this to me? And it, you know, and and ever since then, I'm just like, I really want to see this movie, and I want to see it. I, I want to see the song in the movie, you know. It's, so it's, it's that one is still on my list too. Yeah, you are a a sensitive one, so you will probably tear up at some. <laughs> probably. But it was good. I mean, probably. that, that it came out at, at just a great point in the movie. There are some great like dance numbers and musical numbers, and it's 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 a mm -hmm. show. And that's what mm -hmm. you go, you know, like to the movies or even to the circus to see. Mm -hmm. So the story it's based on is very loose. It's a very loose story. So if you try to go back and research it like I did, like, oh, some of the stuff did not happen at all. But because um, <laughs> isn't it mm -hmm. I, I feel and I say this because like I used to work for the Ringling Circus is like, isn't it based off of Ringling? Like Barnum and Bailey? It, or like, yes, yeah, based off of uh, Bar 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 Barnum. 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 OK, Bailey. yeah. That's what I thought, because I'm like, I recognized on, it. I'm like, wait, hold on. This looks very, like, the trailer sounds very familiar. So, yeah. Like, oh, okay, cool. Nice. Like how they started. Mm -hmm. So they didn't really, I mean, they could have just fabricated the person. They didn't really need to go based on his life, because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's my opinion on it. Um, but we're talking way more about musicals than I intended to. <laughs> we're musical musicals are awesome. They are. Hamilton. Uh, Yes. <laughs> yeah, the last Dear bit. Evan of, Hansen. Yes. Yes. Um, and Les Mis. Les Mis. The whole list of them. <laughs> um, I am recording on my newest, uh, the member of my inanimate object family, KRS One. This is my new laptop. So, welcome to the family. Um, welcome. 
just to acknowledge that because I did have a, a short little contest because I needed to name it. So I was suggested that name, which sounds like it could be an android of from Star <laughs> Wars fame. But no, it is a, an old school hip hop mm-hmm. rap, which I cannot tell you one song that he has done. And I have no shame in it. Mm-hmm. One of them. This episode is also brought to you by a couple real sponsors. Well, they're not real sponsors. I just want to give them a shout out of uh, Kickstarter. There is a new comic I just heard about today that's being kickstarted called Wash Day. This is, oh, uh, hold on. I have the website open. I should have it open. Do, do, do. That is my website opening <laughs> song. Do, 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 do there. While I look for that one, I'll tell you about the other one. Uh, Clarity for your creative career is by our friend Leo, uh, Laura Mioli. She just published a book. Mm-hmm. Um, so go nice. check it now for sale on Amazon, or you can go to lauramioli.com backslash book. That is Laura, M-E-O-L-I.com backslash book, and go check out her book. Actually, go buy her book, because it is uh, good for all those creatives out there who want to kind of learn how to uh, follow their passion and make money from it and be freelancers I need that all that book. stuff. So, yes, so go do check that out. Uh, Wash Day is a slice of life comic that pays tribute to the beauty and endurance of black women and their hair. So go kickstart that project. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could just put that in. I'll put a link in the show notes. But um, if you're lazy like I sometimes am, just go to Kickstarter and probably search for Wash Day by Jamila Rouster. She's the writer. And... um, they are looking to get five thousand dollars. They're currently at two thousand one hundred sixty-four, uh, so they can mass publish and distribute. So go check that out and go support. Where's that? And now we will take an actual break, and when we return, I will have your Black History fact and Sheboygan news right after this break. Once I figure out where that is. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Hello, Indubians. I'm Laura, host of Louder Vision, the podcast for visionaries, artists, and creatives. On my podcast, I'm interviewing fellow artists trying to figure out how we can bring our creative vision to life without compromising our values, crushing our soul, and dying poor. Yep, that explains it. You can listen to the Louder Vision podcast on lauramioli.com and connect with me on Twitter at Loudervision. Here at Johnny's Apple Orchard, apple cider is always in season. There are plenty of happy customers year-round. I love me some of that apple cider from that Jimmy Beach Fuzz. That's Johnny Appleseed. Jimmy Cherisdale? No, Johnny Appleseed. Jenny Applecoke? Close enough. Johnny Appleseed's Orchard Apple Cider, always in season. Look for it in the produce aisle at your local grocers. are back welcome back that was a fantastic break thank you so much for hanging out during that break wasn't it a good break everyone it was a good break <laughs> it was glad yeah. to be back needed it got like mm-hmm. a glass of water um and glass of well you got a glass of wine i'm sure did you get anything during your break nisha just yeah i got a lacroix next to me i'm good <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, before I get into the black history fact, I forgot there's a bit a um, I, I learned a new term today and uh, I guess podcasters do this. Not all of us, but since we all are our podcasters here, there's this thing called vocal fry. Um, I, I did, oh. Are you familiar with it? Or- yes, I am. Um, I learned about it from like the Kardashians. Oh, OK. Are you- <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not judging you. But no, no, I don't watch um, it. I don't watch them. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Sure. Uh huh. No, because I learned it from like um a speech class, and my teacher explained what vocal frying is using the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. And ever okay. since then, I've just been like, oh my god, that's what they've been doing with their voice. So what is uh, it? Like, do you want me to do an example? Yes. <laughs> Please do. Yes. Okay. It's like. 
it's like you change the pitch of your voice and I'm not exactly sure why some people do it I can't remember the reason behind it but it's like how they talk is like their vocal they're frying their voice so it's like sterling we have to go get a salad <laughs> and oh my god I lost my earrings in the ocean <laughs> life is hard they and do Kanye, that oh my god and kanye <laughs> just wants me to wear black and clothes with holes in them all the time so that's, i'm not the best impersonator i don't know what i was doing there that was um, pretty good podcasters it, well they learned what it was it, that was even a thing and uh mm-hmm. the guests demonstrated what it was so i was trying to write down what it was i was hearing so i was hearing their <laughs> They're going really low and dry mm-hmm. and gravel would just drag their words. So yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so you got you got it. You got it. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I hope I never do this when I podcast ever. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I was hearing. I'm like, oh my God, that's that is a new thing that I'm going to not do, but here I am doing it because I just needed to, you know, try it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Courtney, mm-hmm. do you want to girl? You know you want to. I don't want to try it, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. But I get it now. Uh, how'd you do it just one? Y'all did so well though. Y'all did it so well though. Dang. Is that it? I don't know. <laughs> Yours was bearable. I felt like my voice oh my No, I felt like my voice sound like nails on a rusty char. <laughs> yeah, it's not pleasant. But I think that's the point though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not supposed to be a pleasant thing, but it's it's hilarious when you're doing it on purpose. So at least it is to me. I'm finding joy in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I keep losing my phone. Because now we will get into our Black History fact for today. Black History. Black History. Black History. Black History. Black. Today's Black History fact. First of all, I'll ask you both if you are familiar with Bessie Stringfield. Yes, no, maybe. Mm-hmm. Can't say that I am. Can't say that I am familiar either. Okay, neither was I as of yesterday. So, <laughs> um, she is the, known as the motorcycle queen of Miami. She's the first black woman to ride across the U.S. solo and also served as, as a dispatch rider, which is a military messenger, during World War II. Okay. Um, she is the hero nice. of Harley Davidson. She owned uh, uh, 27 of their bikes, so she has or had at least 27 motorcycles. Um, She died in 93 at the age of 82 Mm -hmm. due to a heart condition. But even prior to her death, she was still riding motorcycles like regularly. So that is just just a little snippet of her because that's so she's just a regular Mm -hmm. B.A. Yes. Yes. And as I was kind of writing down these notes, I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? This could be a movie idea for, um, I'm not sure if, if this would fall under speculatively, speculative fiction or, or maybe uh, historical Ooh. fiction. That's the word I'm looking for. Of, um, yeah, historical yeah. fiction. Doris Payne and Bessie Stringfield kind of teaming up or doing something together. Mm, I can see that. That'd be pretty dope, actually. I'd be down for that. As we, we oh. This motorcycle is a real yeah. thief. And, uh, yeah, I mean, have at it. I'm just putting it out I mean, there. That'd be great mm-hmm. drunk history, mm-hmm. history segment if that, <laughs> if that ever actually happened. Just someone retelling that story. But yeah, I, I would love to see, yes. I would just love to yes. see like the Netflix multi or even mini series of just her riding around during the war. That'd be awesome. Mm hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. As a black woman during the war oh, on a motorcycle? motorcycle? Are you kidding me? That I mean, that story, that story is just mm-hmm. writing itself. That's yep. unheard yeah. of. It, it is. Uh, do they even ride? Do women even drive cars during the war? I mean, and this lady's riding around on a mm-hmm. motorcycle. Man. Now, even while she was driving across the country, and this is stuff I omitted from my notes, but I, you know, read some research. I retained some information. But um, she, of course as a woman was uh, discriminated against. And of course, mm-hmm. because she was black uh, and arrived in Miami, uh, a police policeman would not allow her to ride around in a park. And, and then she actually showed the, the cop like, Hey, I can do some stuff with this. And she did some antics and tricks. I'm like, okay, you, mm-hmm. whatever you want, because you proved yourself. 
mm. that you can do. Wow. You can do and uh, they, other places that she's been to, they they really wouldn't let her stay at any accommodations, like because she was wow. black, mostly because she was black. So she had to stay on her bike. So I, I know how uncomfortable that must. Be. Yeah. Just imagining what that could look like. So this deserves right. to be made. This wow. should really be made. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, just... I know. And somebody, you, let's do it. Let's go. Drunk history. And now I finally have a story that if I were to get drunk, I could tell that story. <laughs> you should. You should. <laughs> but I was. You should record it and like send it to Drunk History, no. so that I can get. It. No, that's how like most of these things <laughs> get so much attention. Like they just did the. Um, mm-hmm. That's how it started. No. Yeah, I remember the first one, which actually happened to be <laughs> about Hamilton, um, and and Aaron Burr. And uh, was that the first one, the first drunk history? That was the very, very first one. Like before, I didn't know that was the very first one. I thought that was just like one of the first. Nope, that was the first one. The second one, I think, it was wow. like Benjamin Franklin, mm-hmm. maybe. But the very first one was wow. Burr and Mark Gagliardi. Dope. Uh, drunk on a couch <laughs> trying to tell this story <laughs> it is <laughs> like, I, i'm not sure if it still might be on youtube but that was like it was one of the best best ones so <laughs> um but yeah drunk history i got some catching us up to do man i'll send you the link if i can find it online i'll, I'll send it i'll send it to you, to you both just in case just in case you haven't seen it. okay sweet yeah do that so really, this is this is really more homework for me because I'm I'm just sending <laughs> things. Fine, I'll get on Google. Fine, I'll get on Google. It's such a chore, but it's fine. That's okay. I got Thanks it. Thanks for taking one for the team. We appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> yes, we do. Thank you so much. I can handle it. <laughs> um, now for some Sheboygan news. Good morning, Sheboygan. At least twenty percent of. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, let me back up. As we're recording this, this is a Tuesday. It's an election day for them. So uh, 20% of the candidates, not candidates, the population of the Sheboygan area, there should be voting today um, for various things, including, I guess, a mayor for Sheboygan Falls, which I'm assuming is probably just a portion of Sheboygan, not just the whole thing. Um and they're also going to be, of course, debating about the Kohler golf course. So that's that's still going on in some of the forums. But also, they are still in winter. And most of the rest of the week and the weekend, it should be their highs are in the low 30s and lows in the teens. So I feel so sorry for you guys. But hopefully spring will. Yeah, that blows. Yeah. I can't even. Mm-mm. I just can't even. That's all I got to say. I can't even. Yeah, it snowed yesterday. We had like a measurable amount. Um, depending on where you were in the state of Connecticut, it was either seven inches or four inches, three inches. Um, and then it just started melting. Like most of it's gone today. So like what snow? I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but we saw you yesterday. Like, how are you trying to hide like that, though? Yeah, I I was pretty bitter about it because we're it's April. <laughs> It is April. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It, it, it is. It's basically June, you could say. Two months I'm not like You could say it's June. Yeah. yeah. I I am the angry monkey emoji that I not emoji uh gift that I like to keep using. <laughs> <laughs> but that is me. Uh, I should put that on it because you know, mm. my mood a lot of time with mm. some of this news. Snowing again? Angry monkey. Um, Mm -hmm. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, um, we have some Ask and Do questions. So we'll open up the mailbag, which we haven't done, I think, in like two episodes now. So we've got some mail. So we will take another quick break. When we come back, mailbag. The Indie Podcast. It's right in your own backyard, hiding behind a bush, or maybe already inside your house. Sometimes they are hanging out in malls, in schools, in churches. While it might be hard to believe, roughly five million Americans don't even know where clowns come from. In communities just like yours, there are many who need help. 
Join people across the country who are coming together to stop clowns and their foolish shenanigans. Start today. It can be as easy as telling parents to stop inviting them to birthday parties. No child in the history of children has ever requested a clown at their party, ever. Clowns feed on your attention, so don't give in. Ignore and run away. Moms, moms are okay. But remember, if you see a clown, don't fool around, get out of town. And we are back. Welcome back, everyone. And um, speaking of gifts, which we before we went on break, um, there needs to be maybe there is one. I don't know if, if you guys are aware of a reverse GIF search because hmm. I need to know where some of these. Hmm. Mm -mm. I mean, I've heard of it, but I never I don't know, like stuff. I'm not aware. I will make that a homework. But what is that? You guys can go look it up yeah. for me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, speaking of that, before we get into the mailbag, uh, I do want to touch on a new obsession for Courtney uh, because she has discovered oh. where her favorite gifts have come from uh, the IT crowd. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh. That show, you guys, is so good. I, uh, Nisha, have you heard of the IT crowd or watched it? No, I have it? not. This is new to me. Homework assignment. <sighs> Listen. Okay, so I like I'm I'm new, like just started watching it last week, maybe something mm -hmm. like that. And it's you know, it's it didn't take me long to binge watch it because, it, you know, there's only five seasons or series because it's British, but there's only like six episodes in each one and they're 20 minutes long. So it, it doesn't take you very long to get through it. Um, and it's just got that that wonderful British humor dry and just kind of offbeat and just perfect and you know it's i just i love it i'm about to binge watch the whole series again because i'm already done with it because there's only you know so much of it to go around so it's a quick watch it's so good and it's so funny oh my gosh you guys it's it's definitely my new obsession yeah i've i've been watching it for years it's it's as as one word to another I definitely recommend it to you, okay. so please check it out when you can. Nice. And w whenever you do, be sure to tweet either one of us, so that way, you know, we know that you're watching, and we can re we can relive the joy and magic with. Yay! You. <laughs> yes, we'll it's do. so nerdy. I just, it's, I just did it's you really <laughs> nice. I'd like nerd. I just googled it's, it and I saw that Richard Aoyde. Oh, I cannot uh -huh. say his last name. I'm not gonna boot you. I can't either. I don't I, know. He's so funny. Um, he is, so and oh, but he's so funny on this show, man. Just oh, ugh, get your life. Just get your life. I'm I got my life sold. <laughs> nice. I'm in. You guys sold me on it. Uh, and nice. then, and we can start um, using quotes uh, with each other um, from the show because it's for me. It it can be a quotable show, but for me, there's also it's just so many memorable scenes. And um, mm -hmm. the more you watch it, the more it just sticks in your head. And, <laughs> Remembering things, uh, yeah, it's great. So that is it really is. Nice. I love it. So yeah, so let's get into the mailbag. And now, um, I know some people really love this this jingle, even though I've gotten tired of it. But I'm gonna do it for you because I, <laughs> as as a host, I love you. So I will play this for you because I know it brings you joy. Aw, thank you. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. Mailman, mailman, mail today. Reach right in and pull one out. Oh, letters. I love those letters. Let's find out what you got to say. Oh, boy. Mailman, mail today. Yes, it is time for letters where you can uh, hashtag askandoob or send us uh, mail or comments, questions, things you want us to answer that you can't find through Google because you can't find everything through Google. But um, we have some questions today from various people. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to read all of them. Once I can find where my notepad is. There it is. Thank you for bearing with me there. This first one actually is from me. Um, I know this, this, this is unorthodox, I know, 
hold your horses, everyone. But, uh, but I had posed this question on Twitter. It was actually, I asked a random coworker, but um, I'm going to bring it here so we can discuss it and debate it. Maybe we come up with a definitive answer. But if a giraffe were to wear a tie, would it be up high on the neck or would it be closer to the body? <laughs> huh. Okay. I would say closer to the body. Hmm. That's actually what my coworker said as well. Um, <laughs> Courtney had, had had to run away real quick. Um, oh, okay. But so that that's that's why she's deep in thought. I mean, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I think of it as because like a tie is usually close to your shoulders, not high on your neck. Mm hmm. So I guess that's like my reasoning, but it's like a giraffe. Oh my gosh, it could look like, I guess it would look normal if it was high too. Oh man, hmm. this is just like a really, whoever wrote this question is a genius. I, I, I did. I, I came up with it because I was, yeah. um, <laughs> the whole backstory behind it, I was thinking about designing a t-shirt with, um, you know, with giraffes on it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, if I were to put it, you put it in a tie, or actually, I was thinking of a bow tie at the time. Mm. It's like, well, where are the would it be up high, like right under the like its chin, or would that be closer down to its body? So, I kind of left the tie portion up to inter interpretation. But see, now if it's a bow tie, does that change it? And do they wear multiple ties? Oh, I never thought of multiple ties. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you have some space, you might as well, you know, utilize that mm -hmm. to. I'm so, like yeah, it could be. Could be a bow tie. Yeah, I'm also googling giraffe wearing tie. <gasps> <laughs> okay. I thought about <laughs> what 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 did you come up with? I see both options, and I'm rethinking it's, my first one because it looks awkward. Like with the the necktie down low. With the necktie down low, yes, it looks like he's more relaxed, like he's casual. He's just gotten home and he's about to like chill, and he's loosened his tie. But up high, it looks like he's ready mm -hmm. for business. Oh, okay. Well, well, maybe that's the difference mm -hmm. then. Like if you're home, because it's not tied up tight, it's, you know, it's loosened. So it's going to be down. Okay. Hmm. It's going to be a business casual giraffe or, you know, ready for the, ready for an interview or ready for the board of directors meeting giraffe. Yeah, that's true. He's got a show. He's ready. He's got his stuff together. Can't be slacking. Hmm, this is Friday. Right, casual Friday, then it's down low. All right. Uh, keeping it on a tie-related question. Or I have another tie-related question. Um, this one sent in to us and asks, if I'm going to a black tie event, does it does it have to be a black tie? What if I wear a... Um, what if I don't own a black or plain black tie, or maybe I'm assuming maybe it's striped, or they want to wear a red tie? I am not a fashion person. I'm just going to mm -hmm. say it's okay. Hmm. Does it have to be a black tie? I think it has to be black tie. I th I, like I thought yeah. colors were prohibited if it's a if it's if it's black tie. It's, it's supposed to be a black tie. I thought. Hmm. Yeah, that's what yeah. I like have feel. Like, is it? mandatory or like you know dress code wise i feel like it probably would be like if you're gonna yeah if if they say black tie you probably should be wearing a black tie you don't want to stand yeah. out with a, a white tie or when it has funky designs on it because then you'd be frowned upon in yeah, just, society just that don't, you're trying don't be a rebel just like you know mm -hmm. dress the part do do right and fit in <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or they, yeah, or they might not let you in, and which right. which has happened to me before. Not at a black tie event, but um, mm -hmm. I did way. I was gonna say way back a long time ago, but yeah, okay, yeah, actually, it was a while ago. Um, my friend, she wanted to take her younger sister to the club because I think she was now, I guess, legal enough to get into one. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't remember if she had to be either seventeen or eighteen, but. We went to one of the doors, and I think the door might have been maybe like 21 and over. So I was able to get into that one, and they kind of looked me over like, yeah, hey, you're good. Go ahead. But then I realized like, oh, wait, my, my friend's sister can't get in. So we went over to the other door, which had like the lower age limit, and that 
particular bouncer would let me in because he said my pants were too baggy, which they really weren't. But this was before skinny jeans were a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And or maybe if they were, I wasn't aware of it. I don't know. But um, I was like, I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, the other guy let me in. Why aren't you? Let I didn't realize it at the time. I could have just gone in and then met them inside. Mm -hmm. But, you know. That whole hindsight being 2020 or whatever. So, uh, um, or maybe we didn't know we could meet within the middle, but yeah, th there was no sign saying no baggy jeans or baggy pants, which my pants were not. I think, I think he was just being, you know, discriminative against me, mm -hmm. perhaps. Don't know, but I was actually okay with it because I really didn't want to be there anyway. So everybody, well, I don't know because everybody wins, but I won. There you go. <laughs> That's the way to look yeah. at it. Yeah. So, so it was one of, one of those, un, not underage clubs, but it's like the ones where it's like- Like you can be 18, 18 yeah. in up section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or 16. There used to be one near my college where it's like 16 to eight. Like there was a 16, you could be 16 year, years old and get in. And then there was like the 21 and up section. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, always oh, like, eh, no, I'm going <laughs> to stay away from here. <laughs> Probably for the best. I feel like it's a little- yeah, the one time my friend said she went, she's like, nah, it's creepy. Don't go there. Mm. Like, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it does. You have the 21 year olds kind of just maybe just looking, gazing upon the younger ones and just. Mm. Oh, and she said it was weird. worse. It wasn't like 21 year olds. It was like 30 year olds. Oh. That's, that's what made it creepy. Yeah. Yeah. You had to be, you basically need to go there in a pack. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's, I mean, oh, no, that's nowhere to, that's nowhere to be. Yeah. Mm -mm, no. Yeah, nothing about that sounds good. Like no. uh, once you raise mm -mm. the limit of basically the ages that are allowed in there, yeah, just no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're wise to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a nerd then, so thank goodness for being a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Makes life a little bit easier sometimes. Mm hmm. It is a tad. Yeah. I didn't realize that until now. I was like, yeah, I, I stayed home to do nerdy things. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I can't go out. I got, I got nerd stuff to do. So mm. I don't think you said that, though, did you? You didn't say I didn't, that. But I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have uh, those that thought process back then. It was also I just didn't want to go. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm in the house. It's late. I just put my soft pants on. So I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to Okay, I didn't have soft pants back then, but I have them now. So if I come home mm. and I know I'm not going back out, the soft pants are coming on. And yes, <laughs> they are named Karen. I also have another pair. It's named Jane, but those are scrubs I got from work. You're sounding like a, like that's that's how it is when a woman gets home and she takes off her bra. At least that, that I can't speak for all women. But when Courtney gets home and she takes off her bra... And people are like, yeah, let's go out. Mm, um, What? Wait, no. <laughs> my house shoes are mm -mm. on, my bra's off. I, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Thank you, though. Oh, yeah. It's like the, yeah. it's the best feeling. And then when you get into like sweatpants, you, re you really aren't going back out for anything. Like, yeah, I am in. I'm in yeah. for the night. It's only 3 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's me in a nutshell. Think... How did you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think I almost cursed one time when a friend called me at like, I think it had to be like seven o'clock. It was like a Friday night and I just got home from work and I'm like, I just, you know, rushed to the shower and got really comfortable. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, this is last minute, but I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> leave me. Stop right there. You Stop right there. You're lost right there. <laughs> you lost. You, you should have got to me mm -hmm. before six. I would have still gone mm -hmm. out. Now I'm in sweatpants. Mm -hmm. I'm not leaving. Mm -hmm. Sucks mm -hmm. to be you, because now you get to go by yourself. Yep. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel but your pain. Usually, yeah, usually it's got to be something that is worth me putting back on a bra and pants. It's got to be oh, worth okay. anything. Like, but is anything ever really usually that food. worth it, though? Usually okay. food, if, I can, if it's not the food I can get sent to my house, it's got to be really right. good food. But, right. sure. Yeah, no. It, it, I'm, I'm a great great. But like, except for the bra part, but I'm agreeing with you. Like, but <laughs> just replace that with like actual pants I would go out in public with. Um, but it sometimes either has to be food. 
if somebody is, I'll just say it, if they're important enough, mm. <laughs> um, or maybe a multiple of things, like it's an important person with food, mm. and like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Or, or it's, or maybe it's something I really want to do, mm-hmm. like, uh, maybe it, like, look, I was going to use a movie, for example, but the way my schedule set up, I kind of do that after work, and mm-hmm. if I'm already home, it's a struggle for me to go back out, like, oh, man, do I, <laughs> or I just don't my soft pants i'll just I was like okay i'm going back out i'm just going to keep my shoes on because if i take my shoes off and then it's going to be really questionable if i go back out because mm. uh because the feet they love to be free <laughs> mm. they, True that. they and they need they deserve to be free you know they really do you gotta stretch your toes out you know play a piano or something with them <laughs> Something, just stretch. Ah, uh, yes. Pop those toe knuckles a little bit. Yes. Either you pull them out or, or crack them. Whatever you got to do. Mm. Whatever you got to do. Just that's how you know that you're home. You hear the toes crack. Mm. Uh, the bras are off. Soft pants on. Yep. Yes. Yeah, home. <laughs> this I want every day to feel that way all day. Oh, just that'd be nice. That would. That would. It would be nice. Then it would be, you know, an okay, an occasion to actually put the tie on, whether it's up high or down low, if you're a giraffe. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, sorry, you you did miss that part. I'm sorry because of Aww. technical issues. I feel like we've had this discussion before, though, like off off camera, off recording. Have we talked about this before? I don't think we have. I did tweet about it. Um, Maybe that's, that's, that's what the- it was. Yeah, that's the closest it's ever been. But I mean, it's something that we can revisit because I'm, I'm, I'm sure people out there would have more answers to give me. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, I do. I really want to ask this one, this one last question sent in by Sarita. She asks, "Do you sing in the shower? Do you have a shower playlist?" Mm. <laughs> and sad, I'm gonna come out and say I do not. I, I maybe I should, but I just I'm never really in the shower long enough to strike up the band. Um, really. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I don't really, I don't, I don't, you don't sing in the shower. If if I'm like taking stand, no, like a bubble you bath, you stand in the shower for like forty five minutes, contemplating your life under hot water. I thought everybody did. That. I, thought- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I okay, do cool. it. I don't know. That's a, that's not a normal thing. I, I, I think it's normal. I think we're normal, I, Courtney. Sterling's weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, the contemplate life. I generally do that when I'm driving to work, and I'm like. Am what I? am I doing yep. with my life? Why, why is this yeah. happening still? <laughs> Not only on the drive to work, but after I clock in and I drive, I get back in my car to drive to my actual parking space, I'll sit in the car for another 15 minutes and still continue mm. to contemplate my life. Yeah. Why am I... <laughs> when I start this day now? So uh, that, that is my contemplating time. It should be... It should be Time, but it's it's usually not in the shower. In the shower, I'm still kind of uh, mm. uh, uh, there's no words. It's just, uh, just trying to wake up and and become cognizant again. Mm. Yes, and then be terrorized by Chief, who wants to go either outside or like no, actually no. Chief has been good. I think because I've been getting up earlier, he just stays in bed because he knows mm. I'm not really ready to leave yet. So mm-hmm. he's just he's just there soaking it in, making me jealous because he looks all comfortable, all you know hold up I'm like ha ah, you have to go do people things and work mm. and i get to sleep all day yeah life of a dog yeah but i'm i'm sorry back to you guys uh you guys do contemplate your life 45 minutes in the shower all that water oh. <laughs> <laughs> well when you put yeah, it you like that but i mean no <laughs> i'm i like to yeah depending on my mood i'm gonna probably be listening to music sometimes i need it to be completely silent so no, there's no music. But, you know, the days that I want music, I don't have a specific playlist, but I do create playlists and I just pick one of them, whichever mood I'm in and enjoy my shower. And because I take showers in the, I, I do sometimes, depending on my mood again. But yeah, I mean, the, the acoustics are so much better in your, um, in mm. your shower than they are in most other rooms in your house. So I just, it does kind of work out. So, you know, if, I, if I'm in the mood for it, then, yeah, I'll belt it out and go for it. And, um, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Nisha, are there concerts going on in your bathroom? Um, 
Okay, so when I'm not contemplating every like embarrassing thing in my life in my shower, I... <laughs> like reviewing everything, <laughs> yep. that thing that happened in third grade just pops up out in your head out of nowhere. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I do. I do like to sing. Sometimes, honestly, I'll start a podcast just like to listen to some like something to wake me up. But that's like if I have time to waste and I'm actually listening, but I can't usually hear over the shower. But I do have certain songs I do like to hear. They're usually like the most. I just go to the top 25 played songs and I like put that on shuffle. But mm-hmm. one I can think of if it's usually it's been like Hamilton, like not throwing away my shot or it's been Beyonce <laughs> freedom, like the one when she's dancing in water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So of course. So like in my mind, I'm Beyonce in that moment because there's water. So mm-hmm. it all works. Ah, out. Gotcha. I get it. Yeah. But usually it's just something that'll wake me up. So I do like to sing in the shower, you know, nobody's up by the time I wake up in this house. So it's kind of nice to just like, I can, I'm not, I'm not belting out any high notes, but I am singing. Gotcha. A little bit. Gotcha. You know, mm. feels good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Well, as long as there's not like any uh, dancing mm-hmm. because it is a slippery area, unless you have like a bath mat or, or a tub mat or something, yeah. then, you know, got some traction. Yeah. There, mm-hmm. Then you could do. Young Nisha learned that the hard way. So, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I learned that the hard way when I was 10. Don't dance in the shower ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my older sister, I think, learned it for me. <laughs> um, I'm not saying she was dancing. Uh, to this day, we don't know what she was doing. <laughs> but uh, I was in the living room and this was like one of the evening showers. So I think she probably just came home from work, whatever. And um, then she's showering. And then all of a sudden we hear. Bla, 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 bla. So I'm like, oh, oh no. Oh, no. And then, and then we kind of rush to like outside the door and I'm like, I'm all right. So that's, oh. that's as far as we got. Didn't really get a follow up as to what happened, but she did say that at one point her arm was kind of dangling out of the, the tub. Mm. So again, she's all right. She's, yeah. she's good. Good to know that. Part. <laughs> still, still twitches mm-hmm. a little bit. All right. All right. But, um, that, that is for singing, dancing. So, um, Feel free to share your playlist with with the folks if you would like to do. But you already said Hamilton and um, Beyonce specifically, Freedom, which really is a yeah. song. I might have to you try that one wrong. out. You can't go wrong with those two in your life. Yeah, you really can't go wrong. Yeah, as long as you've got Hamilton, got a point. Yeah, as long as you've got Hamilton and Beyonce, it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. True that. Yeah. Has anybody done a matchup for that yet? I want there to be now. <laughs> <laughs> now that you you know what is it inceptioned it so mm-hmm. i've, I've, yeah, I've now, done my work I've twice I'm tonight it. I've, yeah. I've, now, I've given you doris Payne and bessie stringfield and mm-hmm. now i've given you beyonce, so i mean lin manuel has to have met beyonce by now right i don't I feel think like that he been has like, yeah i don't I think just feel he like, has i just feel like this sh- should be a natural oh. friendship there i know mm-hmm. like bffs mm-hmm. it would have felt a, a shift in in the cosmic <laughs> the force uh, it's <laughs> like when serena had her baby i felt something like a sign a new star popped like up. something it's, awaken yeah mm-hmm. yeah there was a comet that flashed I felt by. awakened mm-hmm. yes <laughs> little <laughs> olympia mm, that child Somewhere on TV where there's like a wave of like just energy and then like, oh, what was that? Like a shockwave. <laughs> right, and right. Yeah. Right. Creative, you know, everybody just starts writing or singing or dancing just immediately. It's like, <laughs> we don't know what happened. And then we find out like at 10.52. Then <laughs> oh. me and you know, <laughs> yeah, That's so why lead of energy. That's that's where it came from, mm-hmm. and I just started saying everything because I felt it, and that's that's why everyone mm-hmm. just felt it all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Or they, they that's exactly the, it. The, that's what happened. Ah, oh, what a day! What a glorious day that will be in 2018 because this year has been overall pretty good. I would say yeah. much better than the last crash years that we've had. Yeah, I'm. If I, I mean, we're four yeah. months in officially, so. Yeah, you're right. It's still pretty early, but so far it's been a, it's been good. It, January took forever to get through. Um, oh my gosh, it, that was the longest month ever. 
It felt. I don't know why, but yeah. it was a really long month. It was. It felt like was, forever. Just, and I think it's for me. It was just like, when is Black Panther coming out? And I just kept yeah. waiting every. <laughs> I was like, is it yet? Is it time yet? And now, since that's come out, like February mm-hmm. just flew by. Hmm. 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 But what? I mean, it's already the is- shortest month as it is. Yeah. So that doesn't mm-hmm. help, but. Yeah, but you're right. After Black Panther is like, okay, well, um, it's now two months later. <laughs> what I'm grateful for, though, is as much or as excited as we all were and hyped up about this movie, it actually mm-hmm. delivered. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, yes. Pay off. I mean, it's still paying off because we still have like brand new memes and jokes that are coming oh from God. it, and a whole new uh, that we that we use to communicate mm-hmm. with each other and. Still haven't quite caught on. It's like, yeah, we're calling you colonizer, yeah. and you don't quite. I just, I love, I love that. It. it just adds so much to the culture. Like, first, it like borrowed from the mm-hmm. it borrowed from the culture, but like, it's also like just giving so much mm-hmm. too. And like you said, mm-hmm. like my and me and a friend, we just like started like doing the Mbaku bark one time <laughs> <laughs> around <laughs> another friend because he was just like talking like I didn't like Black Panther that much. I'm like, we just started doing <gasps> what. <laughs> he was just complaining. That's her. He was complaining, saying like they were trying to pander to us too much. I'm like, shut up and sit your butt down. We don't need to hear this. Shush. Mm-mm. And then you bark that um. That's that's beautiful. That's probably the only response that the like response. the only appropriate and correct response actually. I so should... kudos to you and yeah. your friends. We should have just gone ahead and done the whole like Mbaku um what is it called impersonation. Just like you do not mm-hmm. speak. <laughs> I'll feed you feed you to our children. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And then don't even... That's okay though. That's all right. And then you don't finish the rest of that line because you just leave it. <laughs> Let them think that you're actually gonna kill them and feed them to your children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, rather than going to another break, we'll just go straight to the wrap up. So, um, Nisha, first of all, you're off the list. I, I, I had put you on a list earlier because uh, of the naysaying that you were doing. I forgot what you were naysaying about. I didn't write it down, but um, you're off the list. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know you know, but or, we're just going to, you know what you did anyway. I plead the fifth. <laughs> Anyway, but do you have any um any shout outs or any plugs you'd like to give uh where we can find your podcast, just things like that? Okay, yeah. Um you can find my podcast on well, first of all, it's called Speak On It. You can find it on iTunes, Stitcher, um, Google Play, Music. Um, I'm working on getting it onto Spotify at the moment. And I'm it's you can go back and listen to the previous episodes on SoundCloud, but I will no longer have them on SoundCloud. I'm deciding to take it off and explore other options. Um, but yeah, you can find them there. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and make like weird jokes with gifts and other things that <laughs> don't make sense, and just oh, yes, also screaming loudly at people for no reason and going on rants in a fun way and fun. Um, sure. <laughs> you can follow me at <laughs> I'm at L A underscore N E Y underscore S H A, and that is La Nisha. That's how you say my name. Hmm. Like I did that from nice phonetically. Yes. Yeah. Sing my name. Yes. Sing it. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah, but besides, mm-hmm. I don't really have anything to plug at the time. I'm. I have a few projects that I want to work on with some people. Sterling, you're aware of one of them. Don't know, like. How much you want to go into that at this time because it's still kind of the brainstorming part. Yes, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely yeah. come back to it. And, and but yeah, yeah, I have some. I have, I have a few projects right. that I'm working on, so I'm excited when those will be ready to like just spread the word. Awesome, great, uh, Courtney. What do you got? Hey yo, so you can find me over on the Twitters at IMK Hinton, where I tweet up a storm and tweet a bunch of a bunch of stuff from anything um from Marvel versus DC, which we all know. I mean, that's a clear answer. But Marvel versus DC to um home ownership? I don't know. So a bunch of stuff. <laughs> 
You can also catch me over at Verve HC, which is the Twitter presence for Verve House Collective. Verve House Collective is all about the audacious creative entrepreneur and intention seeker. And um, so the Twitter handle for Verve, again, is Verve HC. And so that's all about motivating and, and living the creative lifestyle every single day and and living your best creative life. So check me out. Nice. Awesome. I say I, I will do, but I, 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 I do regularly. So, yeah. <laughs> um, as for me, well, well, that does it for this Indube episode. You can follow me on all things Indube and go to Indube.com to find the Patreon or two or that. I can speak. Words are hard sometimes. Buy that T-shirt, by the way, on um, my uh, <laughs> store. Uh, where I leave off. Yes, subscribe to um, me on Patreon. You can find more perks, like I said earlier. You can find uh, more reviews, uh, extra episodes, and exclusive stuff. You can find my T Public store, where you can find that words are hard there, or words aren't hard, as Shakespeare once said. I heard uh, he did. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's noted. It's history. <laughs> It's you history get- and like science, but history, the history version of science. Oh, yes. Listen. Go ahead. Sorry. It's okay. Because that reminded me that I actually am working on new designs, which I did share one of them with Courtney the other day because I was excited. Um, so there, there are new designs on the way. I have to get them ready for uh, FanCon. Yeah. So at least one of them that is custom made. Uh, so only I can wear it. I think it's just going to have my name on it. And I don't want everybody to have my name on it. I mean, come on. Anyway, please rate, comment, share the pod on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you so much for supporting, listening, stopping by, and pressing play. Tell someone you value that you value them and live for the folks you love. I've been your benevolent host, D. Sterling Watson. And remember, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. The Indu Podcast is recorded in a studio somewhere on planet Earth. The Indu Podcast is part of the Indu Network. And if you'd like to get in contact with the Indu Podcast, please email indubpod at gmail.com. That is indubpod at gmail.com. You can find the Indu Podcast on Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, and of course, Podbean, or wherever podcasts may be procured. If you'd like to find out more information, please visit Indube.com, where you can find our store, the blog, and of course, our Patreon, if you'd like to support and donate and find more perks and fun things to listen to and watch. For Chief, DJ Joe Daddy, Billford, this is T. Sterling Watson signing off. Thank you so much for listening. Use your words, Chief. <laughs> Good boy. This has been another... 3SFX Production. Hey there, friend. Enjoying this podcast production? I bet your sweet buttery face you are. I bet you're also thinking, how can I support this show and look awesome doing it? Aside from telling your best pal and all their kin, you can head over to Indube.com and two clicks later after hitting the store tab, you'll find yourself with several fun and fancy swag brought to you by the fine folks at the Indube Network and Tee Public. If you're a fan of Indube, Food Fight, or anything under the Indubian sun, you can find it plastered on mugs, hoodies, pillows, cases, bags, and of course, t-shirts. Hurry on over now and you may catch a sale with all tees 30% off. Seriously, they have sales like every other week. So head on over to Indube.com or tpublic.com. That's T-E-E-P-U-B-L-I-C dot C-O-M and type Indube in the search bar and continue to pod with the best.